This is GNOME 45 and it is the most fascinating, exciting and profoundly noteworthy milestone in the GNOME development cycle. There's the all new Libatvata 1.4, tighter GTK4 integration with GTK4.12 and even further core level changes like enhancements in Mutter which is GNOME's window manager. Okay, GNOME was already smooth like butter but now it feels even smoother with core level changes in Mutter that directly communicates movements on screen with the kernel instead of channeling it with the system's main thread. There is improved render time for the compositor which can help to optimize the performance performance and power consumption, ensuring your system runs cooler and faster. Then there's the support for YUV color formats which allows for better video and image processing. YUV is a color model that separates the brightness Y from the chrominance UV components which can reduce the bandwidth and the storage requirement for video and image data. Support for input capture has also been added which can be used for emulating inputs or even relaying inputs from another device, basically generating synthetic inputs programmatically. Next comes the Libertverter 1.4 update. Libertverter 1.4 introduces new widgets for developers such as ADW header bar, split views, tab bar, view switcher bar and more. These widgets offer a reworked design that is more modern and elegant. They also support runtime recoloring which allows applications to change the colors of the whole style using public variables. GDK 4.12 on the other hand improves the Vulkan back-end renderer which can provide better performance and quality for graphics intensive application. It also improves the font rendering, gradient handling and accessibility support. Many GNOME Core and Circle applications have been ported to use the latest version of Libertvata and GDK 4 such as Files, Software, Web, Blanket, Dialect, Solanum, Shortwave, Health, Metronome and more. This ensures that they can benefit from the new features and improvements of the libraries. Let us dive into each of them further but at the same time remember that the surface level updates may change in the final release. I will make another comprehensive video covering everything again after the release. Before we talk about the apps, let us cover the desktop related updates first. GNOME desktop remains as clean as it was ever before. The activities icon is now replaced with a pill shaped switcher which provides even more information instead of just having the activities icon chilling on your screen. The shell has other plenty of changes, keyboard backlight setting is now available under quick settings, new shortcut for toggling quick settings is also available, hardware encoding for screencasts is set to be enabled which is one of the milestones set for GNOME 45. Background apps now show a spinner when it is set to be closing, but although when I tried to close I had to do it two times. So I guess there is some kind of issues still there which needs a fixing. Item level updates under Bluetooth quick settings and a new camera indicator. Okay, moving on to the apps. Starting with Nautilus, the official file manager from GNOME has some visible changes. There are subtle changes in the app which improves the user experience, like the hamburger menu in the sidebar, which I think looks a bit weird because hamburger menus are mostly at the extreme left or is it just me having an overdose of Google's material guidelines? The sidebar looks more distinguishable from the rest of the Nautilus's user interface, more noticeable when you compare the same app across release. Further, there are some performance improvements. Nautilus is expected to feel more robust and faster with better in-app performance like searching or navigation. Then there are some system settings changes. GNOME has been continuously updating system settings across GNOME 43, 44 and 45 is no different in this case. Privacy menu under settings has been revamped with options that look more organized and accessible. I feel now they look more touch friendly and since they have this larger predefined area containing the variety of privacy options. At the same time the previous user interface was not really very hard to use with touch based devices. But what this new design does is serve the purpose of blending in better with the rest of the user interface in GNOME. The same goes for the about page which also received a new update. It has been tweaked to display the technical information via the system details menu. It returns all required information about the system including technical information about the OS and the hardware. A neat copy button is also added to the top left corner on the header bar which lets you copy the system info. Should you need to send it to someone else in an organized format. Furthermore, for the convenience of newcomers to the Linux platform, an informative pop-up has been incorporated to the users panel to elucidate the auto-login settings. Descriptive elements has been included to assist users in comprehending the various options presented in the sharing panel. You can choose on or off for each of them instead of having the option to turn on or off globally. Also, the design now matches with other GNOME settings pages. Enhancements have been implemented in the online accounts panel to provide users with more precise control. 
Also, I forgot to mention, notice the sidebar looks different now, just like we have in Nautilus. I think at this point, they should also consider changing the scroll physics. There is now added ability to forget networks through the saved networks window. Better keyboard navigation with search entry means now you can easily move the focus to the search results after the search is done using just the keyboard arrow keys. This was not available previously. Actually, the entire settings page is now pretty navigable with just the keyboard. Administrator option explanation is also a new feature that is added and many other small changes in settings are there like closing certain dialogues with an escape key and then we have the added top bar clock and calendar switches for changing the clock. Also we get this second switch which if you turn it on it will show the seconds along with the clock. Uh, that is getting displayed. There is also sound alerts to make bass audible on low quality hardware. It may sound stupid but I just had the right device for testing this out since I have used cheap and low quality hardware for a long time. Anyway, the changes are not yet visible separately so let's skip this for now and keep your ears sane. There are new core apps replacing the previous ones like the Eye of Gnome has been replaced by the modern Loop Image Viewer app. It is simple, modern and blends in quite well with Gnome. You can open the image and select multiple images to view them. The UI is very neat. There are some buttons which help you navigate through your set of images. The same can be done from the keyboard using the arrow keys. Then we have the zoom in or zoom out button available on the other side, also controllable with the Ctrl plus or alt scroll, very prevalent in Adobe apps. Anyway, there's a full screen button too, a neat info button on the all new header bar which now makes use of the available space and shows the image info. And finally, there's a hamburger menu for more tools. Notice the neat copy button on the other end, it allows you to copy the image and place it anywhere in the UI like in Nautilus. Finally, the option to delete the image permanently. Also, Snapshot is the all new camera app which replaces Cheese. Gnome software has some changes in the user interface. It promotes responsible handling of flatpak packages. When you try to remove flatpak packages from now on, you will get a prompt to remove associated app data. Flatpaks use a large chunk of storage compared to native packages, so having this is a good option which further helps you clean your disk. There is a new indicator which informs you which OS updates now include security fixes, also a notification when downloading system updates. There is added ability to install all requested codecs at once to prevent multimedia issues which are quite prone in some distros. Surface level changes are there especially in the explore page which looks quite good when the application is in small screens but however in larger screens there is a lot of white space or I mean negative space which has not been used. I don't know, it looks quite empty as of now. I guess uh, it will get fixed in the final release or might be this is the new change. But it manages not to be like Ubuntu's where software is now broken with weird icons, a bright white unknown theme and slow first startup time. This happens quite a lot with Ubuntu. Anyway, we're not comparing operating systems here. Gnome map has received some new updates like zoom buttons move from the header bar to an overlay on the map. The sidebar for readout now adapts to touchscreen display. I feel like more and more updates are now focusing on touchscreen displays and putting this part into consideration. The interface looks nice for GNOME maps but I feel something is missing from the design, uh, mainly if you compare it with modern GNOME apps. Does not particularly mean that this application looks uh, ancient or has a very old user interface but at the same time there is something missing in the user interface which does not make it like really modern GNOME. Like for example in the weather app there is a new update and as you can see the interface looks and matches quite well with GNOME and even if you consider with other applications or compare with other applications which are recently updated I guess the maps application will receive update later as we move along with GNOME's release cycles. Okay, back to the weather app which looks very clean and modern, is right up to the standards of GNOME and it also remembers window size across relaunches as an update now. GNOME console now allows it to change its font so you can go ahead and select a pretty one. Someday you will also get the option to select a terminal bell of your choice like this one. The connection app now can copy or paste images, text and files with RDP connections but it is still on GTK3. I guess that this is from Red Hat as it shows here but anyway, furthermore the calculator now supports more currencies including the Nigerian Naira, the Jamaican Dollar and others. Plenty of other changes are also there 
like the document scanner which has now been ported to GTK4. New app styling and adaptive behavior for core apps are also there like text editor, contacts, files, web, calendar. The full list is shown on the screen. That's all for this video. Remember many of these changes may not be reflected soon enough if you are testing them. Since this is not final yet, you can explore the complete set of changes from the release notes of GNOME 45. Here is the link. You can find it in my description too. Do like, share and subscribe for more such videos. I'll catch you in the next one.